Oh, yeah. Hello. I think it's it. You look like her. You look like her. You thought she was coming to hug you? Hello. That boy got up. That boy. I got in. Are you? Are you? That boy had to like, mama. I was trying to get a gummy worm. But not as good. Not as good. Nah, that's going to be exciting. It's going to really send everything up. It's supposed to drop the end of October, so I know to close out the year is going to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, you've been, you've been watching this the last two years. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the ride, man. And um, in the last three months, my phone's blowing up. It's like, hey, can you get us a little play? Like that downtown play. show. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, just got a call uh, from David saying they want me to do the grant to be the grand marshal for the parade, yeah. the Mad Adder parade. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. And again, all those things are great for your brand. Uh, the Grand Marshal is it gets talked about a lot you know, mm. throughout the year. Uh, well, Rich Friedman, did, Rich role. Friedman did it um, uh. before he passed. So he was a journalist for Pantera. Yeah, yep. I did. I had an article. With yeah, this. Rich. For our Infra show, that yeah, first yeah. one. Exactly. So Rich, um, he did it for a while, and. Um, then they use some dignitaries. So, I mean, you know, for you to get in that role, it's pretty good. Damn, it's one of those. Yeah, it's pretty exact. Well, and that's why I'm thinking, you know, we built this brand, Docker Bay. And we've been doing old school, old school, old school, but I think we've played out the old school. I mean, uh, well, <laughs> They're all dying off, man. <laughs> it's like I was gonna bring cameo, and you know I had this whole lineup, and I started watching their YouTube videos, and the dude can't even get off a bench, you know. And it's like you can't sing "Word Up" sitting on a stool. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is about it. We need to freshen up. We need to, you know. But the good thing is, is we built the brand, so our brand is strong, you know. And everyone knows it. They know what the experience is out there. We just need. A new audience. What's up, brother? Oh, good, good to see you. Come on. I like that. You don't see no one else? <laughs> hey, man. How are you? Good. How you doing? I think, I think this first merger we should do is a blend so yeah. it doesn't like it's not a shock value for people like what they're used to. Yeah. So, like, I think if we blend some of the OG talent and mix it with some of the young and fresh talent, it'll yeah. be a great merger into getting both crowds. And, well, and that's what I would defer to you. Like, what would be that? You know, who in the OG world sync up with what you got? I want to put a list together. Yeah. Because I think, I think, mean, what do you guys usually what? Do you like so are the? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we've been. It's been more day in the time and can function. And you know, this year we had Commodores, we had Average White Band, Tower Power was on the list, but they were really hard to nail down. Um, so it's just, you know, they're out there, the, the bands that are still working. But again, your audience isn't going to necessarily know that. So yeah, yeah. Now I'm, some do, you know, like my daughter and my son who grew up with me listening, right. you know, to all the earth, wind, and everything growing up, they were exposed to it. Yeah, I think, I think we could get a good blend. I'm going to make yeah. a list of songs that kind of fits because I still want the music that I grew up hearing and my parents listened to because we still want to cater. Like, my audience is from 5 to 50. Right. So they know all of the older music, and it's a good way to teach the kids about the history while also giving them some of the younger guys, too. I love so, it. So, yeah, I, I think I'm going to make a list. And How maybe, many artists and maybe you, you can like invite an OG in the, the rap world. Exactly. You know, we get a sweet dog and get it. somebody who wants to come in and do a couple tunes, yeah. you know. But yeah, that would be another what way to kind of- What do you usually do, like four or five artists? Yeah, we're thinking of bringing it down to three, because we've been doing four, but what ends up happening is you got four main stage turnovers, and during the turnovers are the main stage, you run the small stage, and you get all the local, they're, they're due. Um, so that blend's been working great, but we found that, man, that last band that comes on at eight o'clock at sunset, um, the crowd starts to thin, it starts getting a little chilly, and now they're older, so they've been there all day. We'd like to end it on a big, you know, yeah. so we're thinking if we killed it at 8 instead of 9.30. Yes. So we just don't go yes. quite as late, mm -hmm. right? And that's how we like to yeah. maneuver. Yeah. How long is the fest 
Uh, so we started at one o'clock. The doors are open. Oh, yeah, one to nine thirty. One to nine thirty is too long. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> now, all of my shows Sleepy. are two hours. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, I think we should. Yeah, we plan like that. I even think um, once I make this list, I'll see. But I think if we fit more artists, but through smaller uh, set times, yeah. like what we're thinking for seven or seven days, like I'm going to bring out a lot of artists, but smaller sets, 15, 20 minute style sets instead of having it super long. That way it just keeps the crowd kind of engaged Absolutely. and fresh. Yeah. And you could really have them just do like their hits and it'll be exciting. Yeah. And then you get to go see the next act coming. So yeah. I, I think that'd be a better blend and just you know, like it did in LA. They yeah. just did one. It was uh, the big R&B fest. And yep. they just did what, short, oh, yeah. short three set? Songs. Three each songs each. I, was, and I think that's how we did all. Because it was a massive lineup. I mean, yeah, we looked at that lineup. It was like everyone on the planet. Yes. Like, there's no way they can get all these fans, but they only had them do three things. So I think that's, that's the way. Yeah. 10, 15 minute sets. And then well, plus the, the way the fresh. festival market, the festival market, we, you know, we hit a hole this year. It's like we didn't get the 4,000 we thought we were going to get. We got it last year, but just the whole market this year is people's money's tight. We're, kinda, we're in a recession with people want to say it or not it's just people don't quite have the disposable income that they've had so because of that the more we can give them to make them feel like they're getting value for their money the the better sell we'll have for sure. and i think that'll go like really easy when you're getting every base when you're able to get you know 10 through 20 20 through 30 30 through 40 40 through 60 yeah then you know you don't have to rely on all the 40 to 60 year olds to come out you get a thousand of each group and you're done you yeah know, we cleared it so i think that we'll be able to accomplish that easily i do too i think just me doing a, a set is, is, is a couple thousand like our fan out there is already moving so yeah it will be for sure i think we'll be able to bring that out but yeah, yeah just just blending it and i'll put a list that kind of makes sense of this. so are you already selling your fairground show yeah this is the started Jul this morning the july show no no this one is just my birthday Bad. So okay, we're doing a smaller the one first, okay. and then in July, once once we do the big fest, we'll do that one because I'm gonna have more artists. This show is just me, and it's really dope because it's moving, and we just want to see the draw with just me alone, and that kind of tells us next year what we need to do. It might just sell out totally with no other artists, and then that just really helps because we know we don't need a bunch of other artists to assist in selling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and everything keeps cost down, which is you know the goal mm -hmm. is to. Where are you having your birthday? Fairgrounds, October 6th. Yeah. So is that the one you were going to do on Mare Island and you're going to do at Fairgrounds instead? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. All right, gotcha. So they opened the door. And, and what do they got, about 800 capacity, 1,000 capacity? 5,000. 5,000. We're just going to do 2,500 for this first one, though. We yeah. have it there just so we can kind of see what the cost is, doing half, and then next year we'll know when we do the big one. So we're basically going to be doing double, so. Right. Yeah. I like it. But, you know, Fairgrounds has several buildings there yeah too. that's yeah. so every every building i think mccormick does like 1500 and expo hall has like 3000 so they just have room to do several variations of shows too. and are you bringing in your own sound or do they have yep, we're yeah. bringing in sound and staging yeah very cool um so yeah i guess the only issue with um next year is if you do do a july fairground it's, is that going to impact us marketing a September Mare Island show? Because I don't believe so. You don't think so? I don't believe so. Uh, different bases, different genres. Because when I when I different think of, when I think of Daka Bay, yeah. like I said, I'm going to do like OG, mid, young for like our July fest. It's like pillows and you know, it's just a, it's a different base being activated. Okay. Cool. And a different energy and just style of show so okay yeah, i don't i don't think it'll affect and i, I really feel like in vallejo like quarterly we there's nothing to do so yeah. you know it don't matter if you did it the next month here. right Jeez. that's a good time for the people because there's nothing to do here so i feel like if you served in every quarter that that really helps yeah, yeah i think it'll be good um and you're talking about july 27th i'm just thinking of when we would mark because normally we start marketing daca bay around may no, July 6th. That's early. July okay, 6th. good. That's good. So that's almost a couple months. Okay, cool. I thought you were late in July. So early July. All right. And maybe we just don't start marketing. We'll try it marketing later, but do a bigger push faster. Yeah, I think I think soon as um, the 707 as as Day Fest is done, we're like, 
We're bringing it because I think people are going to be excited, like I say, to get so much entertainment yeah. out. And there's so many people in the city who want to see me. No, we can't really cover it between these fests. Like, like we said, just in downtown, that was about 7,500 people. None of these fests have the capacity to carry that. And by next year, I'll be double in size and people fly in for these so yeah. i don't I, I think we'll be good and okay, i think cool. people will be more excited yeah than. and i think that, like i said because we built this location as a special place to exactly. see music because you're waterside you're not only seeing beautiful entertainment but you're looking across at the marina mount diablo it's mm-hmm. it's a gorgeous place to listen to music it's a different yeah. energy it's a different energy yeah right and that's why i think getting the younger crowd out there would be fun and i'd mix them you know? um have you thought about ticket price? What are you doing out here? Are you doing the pay as you go still? Yeah, I do offer. Well, it's offer based, so we get yeah. to accept or decline. Right. Um, and usually we average about 30, 40. Like in the backyard, the average ticket price is $100. But on things like that, like 30, 40 bucks. 30, 40 bucks per hand. I, w- I would like to still, you know, implement that just as you feel because it just helps. Because, like, part of, like, Say you need to get 4000 but you only sell 2000 If the ticket was offer-based, you would fill that space. And it's like you make a little bit less money, but you fill the space. So if you're selling merch and selling food and all this, you make all that money back because you got the people in the space. But if they're not able to get into the space at all because they can't afford it, right. they may only be off by $5, but now they can't come. You know, So when you do it offer-based, you allow everyone to get into the space for you to make money on all of your and sell it. You know, all, right. all of your other stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I think I think that'll be the play. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess we just kind of need to put together a, an agreement that it, how we want to structure it. You know, and what I'm looking at is if we share the costs because normally it's on Jeff and I. We pay the whole front end, but then we take the back end. Yep. Um, but on, in this case, if we did a shared um, agreement. It would basically we share the front end, we share the back end. So, luck it should be that the back end covers the front end, and then it's a share of what's left. Right. And we'd be willing to do all of the detail work, you know, getting all the porta potties and that security and setting it all up. Yeah. So, so that you, you have to do with all. That we already now. know everything. I've got the whole it. thing. Every Let us bring the talent. And you bring the talent. You bring the marketing. We'll also market too because we have a pretty powerful marketing base for the older crowd. Um, so that'll help with the OGs. You go after the youngs and bring those both together. What um, budget do you guys usually have for talent? Well, we've been spending one hundred fifty thousand plus. So this year we spent one hundred seventy five. Um, on talent? Just on talent. For them? Oh no! I, I think I could. I think I could really. Yeah. I think I could really help this. One. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, well, I think I could I could get that down and get more people in the building for who we get. It's why we know we need to switch up because yeah. the older crowd they need a lot more catering to, right? So you got to fly in all their gear, you got to put them up in hotels, you got to pay their top dollar because they're the Commodores. They're, you know they're living off of their seventy million albums sold over the years, so you're paying a premium. Yeah. But that's what happens. Yeah. Now, have they just been invited as a guest and they were sitting in with somebody? The number goes way down. And that's why I was saying it might be better just doing a three song. We can keep the cost down because we ain't paying you to play a full set of music. Right. You're coming in, you're doing a special guest spot, you're out. Yeah, I think I think I can help get that down and just bring in some like unique talent that really is just going to do it based off the rest of the well. Right. But just having that allocation, just as long as we're around, like we know we're going to spend like 100, 150 good talent, but I think I'll be able to knock that. Um, I think it would be dope to get Robert Glasper um, there too. Well, Glasper's he's, he's tracking me. But he just hit me to do several shows together. Like really? he's been, he's been waiting to work with me. We're about to do Yoshi's like a residency together. So Very he's cool. he's gonna be open and down. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm gonna really just put the list together and see who we can go get. Okay. And I think we could. I think for a group, half of that, we could fill out the place just on talent alone. I'm not gonna do any performance fees on mine because I'm a part of it. So I think we could right. really get um, that done. All right, so yeah, let's we'll set a budget. Let, I mean, let's see if we can keep it at a hundred k because that's going to leave more to yep. pay all the other expenses. Because yep. when you look at the other expenses, you're almost at with staging, with porta potties, with security. I don't think we need to do parking. We've been parking people, mm-hmm. but 
for a GA show, come on in, and it's a younger base. Just there's plenty of parking on Mare Island. There's lots everywhere, so because that's another five, six thousand dollar expense having parking there. So. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, no, and yeah. it's like no, just come and park. First come, first serve. Boom, you know. We have, you know, we've been doing VIP treatment. We've been doing, and all that costs money. So, you know, I caught, I spent forty five hundred dollars to put white padded wedding chairs all over the place for our VIPs. A white picket fence around them, you know. Yeah. But yeah. we wanted to give an experience. We've done it, but the the cost is to the point where it's almost goes yeah. against. Do you think we can see the breakdown of everything yeah, that I have you a guys whole have done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. and I think and I so think we can just look at all the places we don't need to spend that. We can bring that down because I do think it's still important to give that experience of yeah, what Dock of the Bay has been. Yeah, but yeah, especially if we know we're going to be bringing it down in other areas, then we can be like, okay, we can still do this. Yeah. The picket fence isn't that bad. It was like twelve hundred bucks to put the picket fence up. So you know you can cordon off areas to give somebody a, an extra experience. Yeah. I've been using those really nice white padded chairs, and they're three bucks a chair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think, you could yeah. do you could do regular white plastic chairs. <laughs> they're still going to get a place to sit, but those are seventy five cents a chair. You right. know? So and it all there's ways to up. cut it and still give them an experience, but. We do were catering to like, 65 um, and up. Do you guys do yeah. like photo installations and things yeah, like that? Yeah, I had a, a VW bus, photo bus. Yeah. Um, so people could come in and it's branded. So everybody that got pictures at the festival has Mare Island Dock Bay with three shots of them getting all crazy oh, in the yeah. photo bus. So that was good. That was good marketing. Um, but we don't, you know, I know you put up the backdrops and have guys shoot and do yeah so. and we'll have Chalberto build some so you can do some of that have cool installations for that I think yeah. definitely we can get so total you probably like spend about like 250 to, to throw the fence yeah this year was two hundred fifty eight thousand dollars oh yeah yeah I know we can get it yeah. <laughs> I, I've been running the numbers sure. this was our most expensive year our I think our last year we did 198 the year before that we did about 170 um, we've been going up and up and up thinking if we go up more will come and it just we didn't quite hit it this year <laughs> it's, the, it's the talent it's the talent yeah. like you know the talent is really what's going to bring people in yeah. and get them excited yeah. everything yeah. else is additional oh, it's everything all, it's, else it's, is additional and, and, well, and the beauty is we've already got the location yep. so you know the, the bar doesn't cost you anything because you partner with the company that's going to serve up the bartenders and do the bar unless we want to do it ourselves and we set it up, which is something we've been considering because it's just hiring the bar. Are you guys sharing revenue with like bar and Yeah, so we get a piece of the bar, Perfect. right? Um, but when you look at after the expenses, and we've, I think we brought in 60 k at the bar. Um, all said and done, there's maybe 12 that we're getting yeah. you know, after all expenses. Still something. You know. For year before, so as people didn't drink as much this year, yeah. yeah, they say that uh, people really aren't drinking that much. Anymore. Well, I think it's all the same thing to go with that disposable income, right? It's like now it's one or two drinks before it used to be. I'm going to have my four drinks over an eight-hour period. Mm-hmm. I can have four drinks, but they're, they're cutting it down. You know, people aren't quite and I think experience leads to that. Like for you to want to really drink, shit got it. You know, it's yeah. like that. That's why I feel like the talent plays such a huge part. Right. Because that the talent the makes party. everybody want to do everything else. You want to buy more, you want merch, more you merch, you want to take yeah. more pictures. Yeah. You know, like that experience and just. Uh, when you play downtown, that was by far the biggest uh, money maker they made in two years. Sheesh. Everyone. The whole block. That whole street. <laughs> that whole city. And then oh, Bambinos was really happy. Right. <laughs> you never saw so many people there. Right. Eating in this place. Right. That was beautiful. There was a lot of people in there. Yeah. And that's why I know, like, just us doing the fest alone, it's like we're going to bring in half that draw yep. Yep. instantly. So we really only got to have enough talent that we want to see to bring in another. Because what is it, 4,000 cap? Or 5,000. 5,000 be real. So, because it's long and skinny, it's the only drawback to the location. It's gorgeous, but you're going down this, you walk down. Yeah. It's long and skinny. So, when you want to start getting everybody at the stage, you're only going to get about 2,500 people at the stage. So, now you've got 5,000 people out there, you've got people way back. Have you guys uh, ever put in like display so we did a video wall I mean we've done it every year the problem is is getting it 
out further down the promise because you run into just cost. You know, so maybe you get a sponsor to fix it's another eleven thousand bucks just to put a screen down further. Have yeah. you had any success with sponsors in this area? Getting in, money out of them? Not in this area. I mean, well, Sharkies is going to come up. I think we could we can help with a lot of that because people have just been really trying to get yeah. the Russells. Well, and we can put know, their brand out there. You know, sponsored by Boom. Um, they'll be on the website. So we have a Daca Bay website. Yeah. And we'll put their logos even, up on the web. Um, Red Bull has been trying to work with us a yeah. lot. Uh, it, we we got a few companies that's been waiting to work with us, and we just haven't really opened that door. So I think we could we could get a lot of that. I think this would be great too, especially because we haven't like given sponsors the opportunity yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's gonna give them something big to get behind that they've yeah. been waiting. Yeah. And we've kind of created that platform for sponsors. As a matter of fact, Renewal by Anderson, who does the windows, they just came out as a twenty five hundred dollars sponsor this year, but. She came up to me and she goes, we definitely want to do this again next year. Nice. You know, so maybe we can get you up to that next level, you know. Because um, we have sponsorship levels that the more they give, the more we'll put them in locations, right? right. They can be a banner over the cocktail bar saying so-and-so's cocktail bar. Everybody gets a logo on the video wall during the band breaks. You know? And the dope thing is, like, we get to take it further with us being on the mic because we get to really and say you can the shout them out. And yeah. It's kind of video recording and yeah. music, you know. And stuff. So, what are you using for like staging and sound? Uh, we did 30 year this year, but Canaan it was our go to. We can save a lot of money using Canaan, and they got the 32 foot trailer mm -hmm. stage, the same thing. Um, they're turnkey. I've worked them for three years. They were about twenty-eight thousand. We paid fifty-two thousand this year. 52? That was a big jump. Well, it, they're doing like two, line sta array speakers two stages, line array speakers, eight subs. You know, video wall. That's the whole. Oh, they did pack. the whole pack. Do you think um, we need two stages for next year? We don't have to if we can turn the main stage. The key is the reason why we do two stages is, you know, we have big headliners, right? And they're each doing an hour. And so we had to turn over the stage. They wouldn't share gear, so we're pulling a drum kit down, putting a yeah. new drum kit up, you know, yeah. think, <laughs> all that shit. All that. So yeah. if we, <laughs> no, that's what you guys don't understand. My life has been hell. You know, it's like Commodores and AWB came at eight in the morning because they both wanted to sound check. And normally we only give one band a sound check on a festival because we're like, hey, we gotta get ready for the opener. But they both wanted to sound check they both wanted all their shit set up and not touched, so we had to put extensions onto the back nice. of the stage, roll their gear all set up on risers, and then roll them back in when it was their turn to play. See, you and yeah, like my thing is like if you're gonna do all that, you gotta do tickets, tickets. tickets. Well, we did like, do tickets. No, I mean for the, the, <laughs> it's got to be more than that for them to be that kind of. It's like we do those amount of tickets and we don't do all that. You I know, know, it's like that. That's a well, it's that's old time. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's why I think the timing is just perfect. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, I'd like to make some money this next year. We built this brand, and it's time good. to see some back end, you know, yeah. because we worked our ass off building this. We've got a sponsor play in place where they get good exposure. You know, you've got massive followers, you know, but we're up to 60,000 on Instagram. It's like we're building, nice. you know, yeah. our base is growing. Um, so we're both kind of building these brands, and I think pooling them right now could be huge. It's gonna be big for the city, especially because it's, it's literally Matter of fact, I think city. we could get some money from the city this year because they've been making me pay, 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 pay for everything we do for them. And I'm like, all right, you guys see what we do. And now here's right. what we're playing. You know, that'll work because we, they want a lot from me right, right. now. And they that's know. gonna be my leverage point. It's like, I don't need nothing, but allow me to do my thing and fund it so yeah. i think that's going well, to we be got good. a new city manager new now. city manager hopefully pippin gets in because we have a good relationship we just with met pippin. with pippin yeah. too we're, uh, we're gonna be with her on Friday? She's, Friday. she's Friday. a big music supporter so if she's in at mayor we got a new city manager There's tell her we're doing that we're going to do something together yeah 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 um we have a good relationship. because yeah we've done a lot for her but the city so. manager's got the money yeah, well, he's the one who puts the, the budget together. Yeah. And who, who's the new but city? see, there's a tourism budget, and they spend their tourism budget at Six Flags all the time. Right. Six Flags right. is getting a boatload of their tourism budget. <laughs> right. 
the hotels are getting a boatload of, but we're bringing we're people that are going to be staying in their hotels. They're going right. to be visiting Six Flags because we're bringing them into town. And that's the argument. Is that we are the tourism. Yes. No, right. when we have the meeting, we're, we're going to run that down. We're going to run that down. I think yeah. that's going to be easy. Yeah. Wait. And, like I said, they want me to be Grand Marshal. So, my exchange for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's get like, us some okay, funds. Because well, uh-huh. we're going to do this for you. But we need some sponsorship money. And we'll yep. put City of Vallejo as a sponsor. I love it. Yeah. No, because if that can help us fund our bands, right? So, the talent. If we've got that nut pretty well covered with our renewal by Andersons, we got this cash flow coming in to cover deposits. So these people are on board and we're locked in. Um, and I can handle doing the contract side of it as long as you can get the relationship. There. Yep. And then, uh, you know. California so. Forever is another one that may still be in play because they, they're not going to go away just yet. And yeah, they, they, gave, they gave the Waterfront Festival 50 grand this year. That's this weekend or, or yeah, the weekend we're going to last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, are you doing something that weekend? Because yeah. I was like, oh, if you're not doing it, then you come bounce in. Oh, yeah, we're, we're doing that fairgrounds that Oh, weekend. you're doing the October 5th. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So you 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 guys are thinking September, or do you want to do October? September. September. We've always done September, and we've always done the week after Labor Day. Okay. But were you thinking it might be better to do it? The only danger of doing it outdoor in October is yeah, the weather that September and I, we've never had a weather issue but October it's crashy yeah, yeah. and if the you have all these the people on the hook they October, all want to be paid whether or not the show goes on the only reason I say October is because uh, my birthday is October 6th so every year I do something right. and that just like adds I know you know fire to it but yeah it is that weather thing that, that, that we be talking yeah. about one another. but it's I think, I think possible. September it's too. possible you know, I'm not opposed what, to it. So what's the usual date? What but now, that, like, also know that the Waterfront Festival in Boyle yeah, is always the first weekend in October. Yeah. And that's your birthday, basically. Right. Um, yeah. it's not, so I don't know that we want to try and get the city involved and sponsor us if we're going to be impacting something they're already invested in. Yeah. What we're trying to do is get them invested in this. Mm-hmm. And if it's a month sooner, there's no issues. That's fair. Yeah. And we've established that as kind of our date, you know, weekend yeah. after Labor Day. And even, even for ours, you know, we don't have to do um, July 10th. That's because July 10th is a Monday. And we're not going after 7th or 7th. We're not going to do the city first. So oh, yeah. We could do June or, or even May. Yeah. Yeah. And if you did that, we just buy us a little more marketing time. You know, mm-hmm. So as soon as you finish that, we can jump on Dr. Day announce. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sponsors too that you guys really want or that you know sponsor things. Yeah. Because he does have the pool that he does have in the city. If he goes and talks to them, I think it'll be really helpful mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. Are you yeah. a five one one three C? We do have a five one one three C. Because yeah. see, then I we, we probably could get some money from Kaiser. Mm -hmm. Kaiser's know, been Kaiser, wanting to give us money, Kaiser, but they can't. Kaiser wanted me to do their event for Thrive last year yeah. too. So I think I think there's a bunch of favors we're gonna be able to kind of. You know, yeah. maneuver to make it shake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please do the sponsor list, if, especially because you guys have been doing it. You know who does budgets and what size and whatnot, so we'll know who to go after. Yeah. Really yeah, and then some of the sponsors are gifting sponsors, like Sweet Treatments, Jackie. Yep. Um, she always basically, her rate would have been. 38,000 to do everything she did, setting up all the backstage, setting up all the chairs along the waterfront. She puts backdrops around the staging, so she makes it look real pretty. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she charged me 17. So she brings it way down. I put her on as a sponsor. She gets exposure. Mm -hmm. So that, that's another way you get sponsorships is their gifting mm -hmm. services to you. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Any way that saves you some money? Easy. Yeah. No, I, I think I think we're gonna have a success in it. Yeah. And well, what do you guys usually do for ticketing? Like, so I've been like using that. our ticketing program. Um, we don't have a pay as you go feature, although it probably wouldn't be hard to add because it's just basically like one third pricing. Mm -hmm. um, it's more about managing that than it's like, oh wait, we don't want to accept two dollars, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what 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 has been the price? So we've been selling one twenty. I mean, 150, 170, 120. Jeez. And we're still getting people to pay it, which is why we didn't lose bad. We lost a little, but I mean, it generates a lot of cash flow. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking because we're going after a different demographic, we keep it affordable. You know, I think we do like a $65 ticket, but we can run a pre sale. And we say there's only a thousand tickets available. The first thousand people that sign up. So instead of doing a pay as you go, you just give them. You can buy a forty-five dollar ticket right now, but you got to buy it now. And then boom, we've just sold a thousand tickets, right? So now we got forty-five thousand bucks to work with. Would and you be open to doing uh, instead like offer based? The first thousand offer based, since Lil Russell will be partnering with it, and that's usually how he does this. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'll talk to that. Jamie. I think we could add an offer based uh, feature on the ticketing so that it's fine. built in. But then, would you guys be cool to once we've got that first thousand of offer base, then we go to okay, here's the price. Yeah, I think I think either the first so you, thousand or half, at least half. Okay, you know that you go way. offer based. Yeah. So, but yeah, we can set that number Even whatever if we you want. To, yeah. Because I'm just looking at generating cash flow so that we've got money to work with. Because the more we have to work with, the more we can use to. Yeah, I'm just always thinking, like, I always think of myself growing up in Vallejo. And I'm like, did I have $100 to go get an experience? You know? And then my parents, if I wanted to come with my parents and my family and everybody, would yeah, I be yeah, able to get, you know, yeah. that's $500 for me to experience something in, in, in the city I love. You know, so I'm really, I just always think of that, even with this fairground stuff. That's why we've been doing offer base, and I see, like, some people are getting five tickets and they're spending, like, $150, you know, for five, or $200 for five, and it's like, okay, that's $40 for a ticket, because they want to experience with their family, but right. if the ticket's worth 100 a family can't spend, afford to spend $500, and then get here and buy food, and buy merch, and, you know, so it's just, when we're bringing in, like, a younger audience and base as well, I'm always considering in that. And I never want to build a rapport around my festival where people like feel like Bottle Rock, where they're like, man, we can't afford that shit. That's not for us. Yeah. You know, because then every year you come, they tell the next person, like, oh, you know, they're hella, you know. So, but being that we're doing ours as well, you know, it, it could be a leap because it's like they'll get to go to that one. But I just, I always try to look at yeah, everything. Yeah, that's why I think it's important that we point. keep the cost down, right? Yeah. My son's going to New Paris, seeing all his artists that he likes to go see. And it's 45 bucks, you know, to go in, and then he's dropping another 50 bucks on a sweatshirt. Right. You know, like you said, once they're in, they're still spending. Because he still has money to spend, too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, if you have a $200 budget to go see a show, if you spent 150 on it, you're in there. Like, right. <laughs> How much do you deal with with people that are just offering students? 
Yeah, we, we get we get dollar and we, we leave those for the end. So like you know, we got a bunch of dollar offer, two dollar offers for DC, but that's after we sold eight hundred and fifty tickets, we'll be like, Okay, we'll let a few dollars in because they'll come spend a dollar, but they might go to merch and pay twenty five. Okay, but got that's you. So after, you hold them out and you Yeah, just, yeah. We just you we let them wait with them and say um we just reject the offer and they get it. They either some of them go back in and they up their offer, some wait to the door okay. and they try to figure it out. But yeah, we just we reserve those for the end, or I like to do a ratio. You know, for every twenty I accept on this end, I'll let a dollar in because the dope thing about those dollars is it's marketing that you can't buy. Right. right. Those dollar right. people come in and they say, "Man, I had the greatest experience of my life, and I only paid the dollar. This festival changed my life. Be I'll be back, and I'm gonna tell everybody how great this was." Yep. That's marketing that you can't pay no, for. Not you. Right. And it's like, it's hu it's humanitarian. It's human. It's human. And it makes people feel differently about the place that they're at now. Because yeah. they're like, wow. They and really the people throwing it. Yes. Right? Right. 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 It, it, and it the people throwing it. It's like, hey, they, they looked out for us. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to look after them. I'm going to tell everybody. I'm gonna and I think them. for this year, like, if we could help bring costs down and get, you know, great talent to sell tickets, I think taking like having that bit change in monetary would just help at least for this one merger so people get to experience Dr. the Bay who never got to because that's my goal is to bring the group of people who never get to experience it so they can understand this is something for us as well because right. you know we talked previously and I'm like there's nothing for us there yeah. you know so I think just merging that and, and showing people that now there's something on this side too yeah. is going to be great yeah. love it that would be fire they yeah. really when they see La Russell and Offer Base and Dr. The Bay. What ticketing do you use for Offer Base? We have our own platform we create called West TBA. And we could sell we can sell standard tickets through there too. So if, if we want to just run the ticketing through that platform, yeah. we could do that as well and do it all. What do you pay for fees on your software? I mean it's two well, it's fifteen percent in total, but that encompasses the service fee, the Square credit card processing fee, and then ten percent to the uh, platform. Ten percent. Yeah. Because it's, it's like technology, like to do offer based ticketing, like it's technology that had to be built and coded. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot of processing. Just us going in and being able, we got email and SMS features built into the site so we can message everyone directly from the site. Yeah, I that too. You know? Um, yeah, because I'm just thinking, I mean, we're a buck fifty a ticket. Um, but are the people paying the fees for you? You don't have to. It can be built right into the price. Yeah, it's I'm about to say, because we could absorb fees or we could have them pay the fees. Same, same and, with and do so that. you yeah. set it, so you just set a price and, and an offer based price is, you know, I don't know. I'd like to look at that because ten percent seems hot. I mean, you know, when you start selling sixty dollar ticket, that's six bucks a ticket. You know, it's a lot of money. Um, well, we're going to be taking about fifty of our ticket. Yeah. And the rest is passed through to the show. Yeah. Um, so it might be worth looking at. So if I can. And this is something that that we own and have stake in. So I okay. Can, so I you are getting some back end off. I'm a founder in a company. Okay, good. Yeah. So, right, well, I mean, even, even with that, we can, right, we can adjust well, what we Part of that 10% is coming to you, then that makes me feel better. That it's not all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we can, we can adjust whatever needs to be adjusted to make sense for this event. Yes. Um, all right, so we'll explore that and see um, what makes sense there. Because I don't mind using your ticketing if that makes more sense. Perfect. And it's built in. Yeah. I love it. Cool, cool. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Step one, baby. Another one. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Good shit. Of course. Brother. Yeah. Well, have a good birthday show. I'll be out here playing. Right. With Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, I'm you, good. Are you doing Waterfront Fest? Yeah. And Thank my, you. My Who first public show with the Fraser Connection. And wow. Jordan, Jordan singing. Uh, Tessie's going to do some backs. Legendary.